The air management system's permitting process for the proposed power plant is based on a computer simulation model. The factors that went into the model did not include the health status of the neighborhood that would be most directly affected. The baseline nitrogen oxide levels used in the simulation model were based on general air monitoring data measurements, none of which were done in or near the location of the proposed power plant. The model merely asks if the community is urban or rural. Philadelphia Physicians for Social Responsibility believes it would be a mistake to base a permit purely on a computer simulation without fully understanding the health impact or ramifications of the community of Nicetown and the surrounding area. Both a full health impact analysis and an alternatives analysis should be done, and the burden of proof falls on SEPTA as a public agency. Yes. Likewise, it is in SEPTA's best interest as a public agency to consider relevant case law and future implications regarding Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, a provision commonly referred to as the Environmental Rights Amendment. Article 1, Section 27 states that people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of natural, scenic, star, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations to yet to come. As trustee of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all the people. Moving away from the rationale of the case of Payne versus Kassab and that of Robinson Township versus the Commonwealth, the Pennsylvania Environmental, in the Pennsylvania Environmental Defense Fund versus the Commonwealth, the state Supreme Court affirmed that state actors are shepherds rather than proprietors of our public natural resources. Additionally, the state has an affirmative obligation to prohibit degradation, reduction, and, de and depletion of public natural resources in Pennsylvania. While much of the burden of the affirmative obligation belongs to the legislature, it is not wise for SEPTA, for SEPTA to make decisions that violate the state constitution by jeopardizing the local environment and endangering public health. Okay. Other members of the board, our culture boards uh, have focused recently on the, <coughs> the symbolic uh, demonstration of a uh, point of view. And uh, even though the point of view of the NFL players is clearly expressed, uh, it is misinterpreted intentionally as being something other than what it is, which is the uh, concern about uh, uh, Black Lives Mattering as opposed to any disrespect for the flag or national institutions. Uh, if I had knelt uh, or not stood during the Pledge of Allegiance, that is ambiguous and could be open to misinterpretation. And I don't think misinterpretation is helpful. So. I view our relationship, the relationship between the environmental and social justice community and the and SEPTA as being essentially uh, one of allies. Uh, we, we applaud uh, activities such as at the Frontier Bus Depot and, uh, and many of the things in the energy plan and electrification uh, buses and, and, and so forth, although we do have uh, questions and objections to the speed at which uh, SEPTA proceeds. I would note that uh, yesterday, uh, Mayor Kenny uh, made an announcement uh, that uh, the city would cut greenhouse gas emissions in half, slash energy consumption, and buy or generate all electricity from renewable sources by 2030, and we would hope that SEPTA would do the same. I'll give this to Carol. <clears throat> but when we run into a situation such as we have in nice town, where we think you are dead wrong. We will tell you so. Yes. And under those circumstances, we are adversaries. And we believe that SEPTA has failed to meet the responsibilities and uphold the values that I believe we hold in common. Yes. Specifically, mutual respect, and that means respect, not environmental racism, mm -hmm. respect for the law, and that means compliance with AMS regulations and not begin construction without an air permit. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Honesty and truthfulness in the way in which you explain situations and deal with the public, which has been solely lacking, and general stewardship of the environment, which is going to increasingly require a 
aggressive uh, addressing the constitutional provisions of Article 1, Section 27. Today, I want to, if you will indulge me, uh, uh, do a practice that's inspired by a Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh. And if I disappear behind the podium, I will reappear in a moment. I begin by bowing to the earth in gratitude for life itself. We bow to our ancestors who have paved the way and set us on a path, and I touch the earth. We bow to our teachers and mentors who have guided us and been with us on our journey, and I touch the earth. We bow to each other, our faith community, for showing up and being present for each other, and I touch the earth. Yes. We bow to future generations who will inherit the good work and the work left undone by our generation. And I touch the earth. Yes. We honor you for the hope you give us in hard times. We bow to you in gratitude. And I touch the earth. Yes. Next, I bow to you as our adversaries. You who destroy the natural world for profit. You show me how much I respect and honor our abundant and beautiful planet home. I bow to you in gratitude, and I touch the earth. Yes. You bring forth in me the love I feel for this life-bearing land, its soil, air, and waters, and for the community that rises in its defense. Because of the strength with which I resist your actions, I learn how strong my love really is. I bow to you in gratitude. Yes. And I touch the earth. Yes. Because the pain I feel when I witness the pain of the world is no less than your pain. You who perpetuate destruction by cutting yourself off from the web of life, I bow to you in compassion. And I touch the earth. Because the pain of greed, alienation, and fear is not less than the pain of sorrow for what is lost. I bow to you in compassion, and I touch the earth. Yes. For the power of my anger arising from my passion for justice, justice for refugees that have suffered war and climate disasters, for immigrants who are treated as second-class citizens or worse, I bow to you in gratitude, yes. and I touch the earth. Yes, yes, yes. Because we all want to feel happy, to feel intact and part of a single whole, for that shared longing of community and contribution, I bow to you in compassion, and I touch the earth. Because your actions challenge me to see the limits of my own understandings and free me from holding my view as the only correct one, I bow to you in gratitude, and I touch the earth. You who teach me that the mind is a miracle, capable of manifestation as love, as forgiveness, as greed, as fear, as clarity or delusion. You who show me what I myself am capable of when I am governed by fear and greed. Oh, great <coughs> awesome teachers, I bow to you in gratitude and I touch the earth. Yes. Yes. Understanding that we all belong to the web of life, whether believe it or not, and with love in my heart, I bow to you in gratitude, and I touch the earth. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Different mentality, different mentality today. It seems, it seems hard. hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard, hard is the concrete.